SOS Television, your digital force for an African news network. I am Abigail Okwade and this is Africa Now. The U.S. government has offered a 5 million bounty for information on the location of Jihad Sewan Mustafa, popularly called Ahmed Guri, a high-ranking member of the Al-Shabaab militant group located in Somalia. Mustafa 41, a U.S. citizen and previous resident of California, has held leadership positions with the Al-Qaeda-connected terrorist group responsible for attacks in East African countries like Kenya and Somalia, according to the State Department's Rewards for Justice program. He is on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. Sudan Central Reserve Police has been sanctioned by the United States for using excessive force against anti-military demonstrators. The U.S. Treasury said the force was at the forefront of the crackdown against the protest movement that swept the country since October coup last year. More than 80 people were killed in protests in the capital Khartoum alone and over 3,000 were injured in the five months of protests. Now on constitutional reforms. Tanzania will begin the process of drafting a new constitution after the 2025 general elections. A statement issued by State House said a new constitution would be among other long-term issues that will be addressed then. There has been mounting pressure from activists and opposition parties demanding a new constitution. Tunisia's president on Monday said there will be a national dialogue about the country's political system as he moves to rewrite the constitution after establishing a one-man rule. He gave no details on how it would take place. President Kais Said has already held an online consultation to converse public opinion about the new constitution and has promised to name a panel of lawyers to draft it and put it to a referendum in July. At least 65 people have been injured when two trains collided south of Tunisia's capital, Tunis. No fatalities were recorded and the injured were rushed to local hospitals, emergency services said. The injured were taken to hospitals and there were no deaths. Civil defense spokesman Maurice Tria said, adding that one of the trains was carrying passengers and the other one was empty. This is your Digital First Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. Business and more coming your way after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back in business. Microsoft Corporation will launch its first African Development Center in Lagos. Software engineering solutions are intended to be delivered to Africa from the facility, which represents a $100 million investment by the multi-billion dollar corporation. The hub, which has been built in tandem with one in Nairobi, Kenya, will be the first in Africa and is yet another indicator of Africa's rising prominence as a global talent center. Now to matters of sexual abuse. One South Sudanese national has died and four are fighting for their lives at Nakuru Level 5 Hospital in Kenya after they were set ablaze by angry mob who accused them of attempting to sexually assault a neighbor. Police said they were pursuing the suspect who set the house ablaze. The Nakuru Human Rights Network said it is wrong for people to take the law into their own hands. They should hand suspects over to the police instead. Widespread sexual violence against women and girls in areas of conflict have been fueled by systemic, systemic impunity, the United Nations Commission on Human Rights in South Sudan has said. A 48-page report described a hellish existence for women and girls and said widespread rape was being perpetrated by all armed groups across the country. The report found that these attacks were not random opportunistic incidents, but usually involved armed soldiers actively hunting down women and girls. The Real Boys, a male dance group based in Abidjan, used an intense hip-hop routine to warn about the dangers of drug use and gang violence in Ivory Coast. Formed in 2014, the 10-man dance group original goal was to win local dance competitions with short choreographed routines. Over time, their vision became bigger and they began working on longer pieces comprising hip-hop, comedy and social messaging worldwide that might appeal to an international audience. Mali's former Prime Minister Somelio Maiga, who has been on trial for corruption charges, has died aged 67. Maiga died on Monday at a hospital in the capital Bamago, his fa family said. Maiga was arrested in August last year and detained over allegations of corruption in the purchase of a presidential debt during President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita's administration. 
and that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, to visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. To stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Lukwade. Thanks for watching.